Today we're going to talk to the David Childress, you know, the author of so many books, you know, a person who constantly appears on Ancient Aliens TV show and so many conferences around the world. And today we're going to talk about Colombia and specifically a strange site called San Agustin. Welcome, David. Thank you, Pravin. <music> Originally, where did the camp come from? Were they originally in Vietnam, or no? I think they came. They came from India. I think from southern India. South India. South India. Yes. Okay. And uh, what language do you think they spoke? Well, they they may well have spoken a Tamil language. Tamil I, language. Perhaps. Yeah. Okay. I, I I don't know what language they would have spoken, but okay. uh, sure, may well have been that. Okay. So they start from South India, and they go Southeast Asia. So the they, camp, they reach North America, and then what happens? So the CAM are reaching North America, and, and I believe other uh, people are coming mm -hmm. from thousands of years, mm -hmm. and, and the CAM are very old too, uh -huh. just as Hindu civilization is in India, uh -huh. many thousands of years old. Okay. Also, I believe they have Vimanas. Okay. They have power tools. You think they, they use the Vimanas to move, or you think they use ships? Both. 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 They use both. Just okay. like today. Okay. Today we have airplanes. Okay. We still have ships. Okay. We are still transporting cargo okay. around the world in ships. Okay. Even though we have flight Airplanes, as well. Yeah, that's sure. True. Yeah. Even we have rockets. We're going to the moon. Yeah. But we still yeah, have, we have ships all too. kinds. Oh, well, that yeah. makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there they have fleets of ships. Uh -huh. the, you know, the, today we have so many airplanes and giant cargo airplanes and all that, and all the military planes and jet fighters. Uh -huh. I mean, I think they had Vimanas, they had airships and things, okay. uh, but not the number like we have today. Okay. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it was very different. It was a different time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they were building craft and uh, they made them, I'm sure, very well. They, they were probably very technical, maybe like a UFO. Uh -huh. Some Vimanas had wings, some uh, were disc-shaped craft, okay. others were... Um, Scar shaped craft and stuff like that. Okay. They would use them certainly to for uh, exploratory flights. Okay. Uh, even once they had established certain bases mm -hmm. in Easter Island, in Tonga, in any of these places, and in okay. Mexico, okay. Uh, Guatemala, okay. and in Colombia. Okay. They're going to have, yeah, they're going to come in Vermonters, but they're also sending ships. Sending ships. Yeah, so it's, they're doing it both ways. Route. So they're in North America, Mexico, and did they? Remain as camps, or are they changing their identity? Yeah, now they're changing their identity, and they're becoming a group that began, at, we know, archaeologists say, at least from 1000 BC, uh -huh. what we call the Olmec people. Olmec people. Yeah, and they are pre-Mayan, uh -huh. they are pre-Aztec, pre-Mixtec, pre-Zapotec. Uh -huh. These are the earliest people, really, in, of, of a civilization in Mesoamerica. Okay. And the, the, the Olmec situation... The Omeg civilization is a very strange one. Mm -hmm. Giant statues. Giant statues. Yeah, right. the colossal Omeg heads. Right. They right. weigh 20 tons. Right. Perfectly cut out of basalt. Yeah. Uh, basalt so, so extremely hard. You, you need diamond tools, pa di power tools with mm -hmm. diamonds to cut that stone. Okay. And at Misan in Vietnam, you also have this basalt. Also. Okay. So hard to cut. More difficult than granite. Uh -huh. So we have the, the, the Omex, and the Omex are, uh, f when you see them, many of them look like uh, uh, blacks from Africa, but, but we have those also in Southeast Asia. Okay. Okay, you go to New Guinea, you go to Solomon Islands, go to Vanuatu, uh -huh. you have exactly the same black okay. people there on those islands. Okay. How did they get there? Okay. Well, the, the Cam were bringing them. Okay. And the Cam were many races. Okay. They were Orientals and, okay. and looking very Chinese. Okay. They were people who looked like they were from South India or, okay. or North okay. India as okay. well. Okay. And then some also were looking very Egyptian. Okay. Uh, thick uh, mustaches and beards. Uh -huh. And others were looking like they were blacks from Africa. Okay. So they have all of these different races. Yeah, you make an interesting point. You say Native Americans don't have facial hair. That's right. Yeah, it's well known that, that the Native Americans don't have facial hair in, in, in America, in Canada, 
Alto in, in, in Mexico and in South America. Uh, they do, they cannot grow a mustache and a beard, and they do not have to shave. Okay. They don't need a razor to shave, they, they, they can't grow a beard. Okay. But you see, at Tiwanaku and in the Olmec sites, mm -hmm. you see people with, Tattoos, yeah, with thick mustaches beard. and mustache. beards, right. yeah. And the famous Contiki statue mm -hmm. that, uh, that Thor Heyerdahl mm -hmm. talked about, that's at Tiwanaku in Bolivia. He famously has a big beard and a big mustache. He's, okay. you know, he's looking like that. Okay. Uh, so these were the Olmec people. Okay. And they then spread throughout Mexico mm -hmm. on both coasts, on okay. the Pacific coast mm -hmm. and the Atlantic coast, mm -hmm. and all the way down into Guatemala and Nicaragua. So and going down Central America. All through Central America mm -hmm. and all the way to Costa Rica and even to Panama. They have found Olmec statues, ceramics. Okay. The, the Omex left us all kinds of things. Giant, megalithic, colossal heads weighing 20 tons made yeah. out of basalt, mm -hmm. but also smaller statues as well and lots of ceramics. So all right, we have a wide variety of things and they are very strange. There are people from all over the world. They're megalithic and, and very odd you know, sort of visages, strange headdresses, things like that. And they're coming they look like they're from India. Okay. And so but these guys are Shivites too. Others look very Egyptian, uh -huh. even to the point where they have false beards okay. and things. Okay. And so you see here, like, wow, here are all these different people. Uh -huh. And that's my that's what I claim in my book. I also wrote another book called yeah, The Mystery of the Ol Olmecs, okay. which is only about the Olmecs. Okay. But I'm also talking about them coming uh, from there. There's a there's also a mixture of Shang Chinese in there and the early writing mm -hmm. they have now uh, Archaeologists even at the Smithsonian Institution in America. Okay. They have traced the very earliest Olmec writing which is where the where the Mayan writing came from too. Okay. Okay, everything that's Mayan including the number system, the calendar, uh, and, and the whole hieroglyphic writing. Mm -hmm. It's all originating with the Olmecs. They know that. But the Olmecs, in the end, they, they built also the pyramids of Teotihuacan. The they base built, of the pyramid of Teotihuacan is Olmec. It's Olmec, yeah. And, uh, and the Mayans built after that. Well, the Mayans were not... Uh, no, one, no one says that the Mayans built Teotihuacan, okay. no. Okay. It's a mystery. Okay. Right now, archaeologists... Don't they, know. they don't know. They, they say, we don't know who built okay. Teotihuacan. But they, they don't say it's the Mayan. They, okay. they, yeah, it's, the Mayan territory is farther south and more in the jungle. Uh, the, you have another city farther north called Tula, Tula. which was a Taltec city. Mm -hmm. Taltec. Yeah, and, and, and that's a, those those the Taltecs too have very thick mustaches and beards and things. Right. So that's my whole idea there that the, the Cam are are or leaving Southeast from Asia, South India, going South to India, South yeah. India, eventually reaching Central America, Mexico, becoming the Olmecs, and they become the Olmecs. Yes. And then what happens to them? They continue uh, traveling, and, and perhaps at the same time, they're also going to Colombia. Colombia. Yeah, That's and America. Ecuador, and to Peru. Okay. So they're, they're hitting the, Pas the, the calm are coming across the Pacific. Uh -huh. They're hitting uh, the Pacific coast uh -huh. of the North America. Uh -huh. and, but now they're coming to the Pacific coast of South America too. Okay. And they're looking for gold. Okay, they're looking for gold. Yeah, yeah, just like in India and, okay. and the Cam and the, the Vietnamese in, in Vietnam and, and in Java and everything, mm -hmm. it's gold. Okay. And, and other metals too, but okay. gold especially. Okay. And they have already high technology, I believe they have electricity, okay. they've got power tools, mm -hmm. they're able to, to use diamond cutting tools to, to cut granite, to cut basalt. Mm -hmm. They have a technology that's able to levitate stones. Okay. So they're able to build with blocks of basalt or granite that are weighing 20 tons, okay. uh, 50 tons, even 80 or 100 tons. Okay. Uh, building giant blocks. And then, as you see, particularly in South America, oh. in Peru, Peru. In Bolivia, those perfectly cut walls in Cusco, uh -huh. at Sacsayhuaman, and at Ollante Tambo, even Machu Picchu. Okay. And in fact, as Machu Picchu has a, a sister city in northern Cambodia, uh -huh. which is Priya Vihar. Mm -hmm. 
and it has the three windows, okay, yeah, just yeah. like Machu Picchu, okay? Yeah. When you go to Machu Picchu, that's one of the, and it's megalithic, and wonderfully made of granite, and it's, it's one of the most famous sites at Machu Picchu, the, the wall of three windows. All right. When you go to Priya the Hare, mm -hmm. the Cam City in northern Cambodia, Priya you have the same thing. The, the wall of three windows. It's just like Machu Picchu. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the the Cam now are they're in South America. Okay. They're in Peru, they're in Bolivia, and they're in Colombia. Colombia and Ecuador okay. too. Okay. Yeah, this Any, whole area. What do you have like a specific site that really right. looks like a Hindu well, site? Right. Well, I would say uh, well. Machu Picchu is in there, and again, the keystone cuts uh -huh. are there, okay. which are in the Cam cities of Misson and Borbudur and, and, and Hampi, and all these other places, South India and, and throughout Southeast Asia. Uh -huh. Now you have them also at Chihuanaco in Bolivia, uh -huh. and you've got them in Cusco, I know Yantitambo, well, Machu Picchu is one of them too. Mm -hmm. So you have this, and these are all, all mining areas. They're looking for metals, okay. they're gold particularly, and they're finding it. This is, the, the Andes are a gr great place to find gold. Okay. There was much gold taken out of Tijuanaco and, uh, and other sites in, that are in Peru or Bolivia and the Andes. Then there is this very unusual site in Colombia, uh -huh. which is called San Agustin. San Agustin. Yeah. And it is very high in the mountains mm -hmm. of uh, Colombia. Okay. Very much in the western part of Colombia, near to the Pacific coast, mm -hmm. and near to Ecuador, the border of Ecuador, actually. Mm -hmm. San Augustine, even today, mm -hmm. is a remote town, a small little town, high in the mountains. You're, you're, you're going way up into the, the, the mountains to almost on top of a very lush, green but rugged plateau and streams are coming out and the roads are very new today they've only been around for maybe 20 30 years and even they've only paved them in the last maybe uh you know 10 or 15 years even okay and colombia has had a decades of war that is largely finished now fortunately mm -hmm. And so now tourists can get to this site, okay. San Augustine. San Augustine. Yeah, and what they started finding there, uh, really about 1912, some German archaeologists came and they started seeing these megalithic statues and things. Uh -huh. And then in the 20s and 30s, uh, they began digging up these mounds uh -huh. and they started finding all of these huge granite statues. Okay. And those statues are. Uh, they're of Hindu deities. Okay. There's a Garuda statue there. You have, as you... Uh, you and I... Uh, we yeah, we were there together. Yeah. yeah. And you oh. pointed out to me how there is so much uh, Hindu iconography here, even mm -hmm. statues of Shiva. Mm -hmm. You have the... Uh, Garuda. The Garuda. The Naga. Nagas, the, the, the doorkeepers on either side. Yeah, even the Shiva Lingam. Shiva Lingam, right. And, I mean, you showed me some things, of course, that I would never have known, that, that there are Lingams that have faces of Shiva on them, and mm -hmm. we, you and I saw that there at San Augustine. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not know that there were, that Shiva was be depicted with the fangs. fangs. Yeah, yeah. In and South that's, India, that's typical iconography. Okay. Like uh, in temples like Kailas and other temples, these are very ancient Shiva temple in Tamil Nadu. Uh -huh. and all Shiva statues are portrayed with fangs because... And that's what you see so much of uh, at San Augustine. Uh, so many other people. And the guardians too often yeah. have the fangs as yes. well. Yes. And then there, there'll be the two guardians and they're holding a club. Yeah, yeah. And you will see that too at Kandisuka, the ancient okay. Hindu temple in Java, yeah. high in the mountains, one of the oldest ruins perhaps in all of Indonesia. Okay. And uh, so there we, you have that, the fangs, it, it would seem uh, as you suggested, and I agree with you now, this is a, a huge Shiva temple. Uh -huh. uh, Shiva is depicted in so many of the Different statues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the lingams are there. I was, yes, it's a camp place. And I, I felt that too when I wrote my book uh, mm -hmm. several years ago. 
Is is sadness you know, a big part of that book? Yeah, it's a part. It's a it's a chapter in here. Okay. But at the time when I wrote the book, yeah. I didn't know about, about the, the, the fangs the and, and the Shiva. Yeah, and, and, yeah, I mean, I suspected this was a camp site because when you are familiar with the Olmec sites uh -huh. in Mexico and Central America, uh -huh. and you come to San Augustine, you see very much similarity. You see, yes, what is in Central America and is said to be Olmec. Okay. It's the same kind of thing that's here at San Augustine. I, okay. I knew it had to be a campsite. Okay. And then it was going there with you, really, that you were able to explain to me, okay. really, just how much of an Hindu oh. site it was. Right. Uh, and I was, I was amazed. I thought, yeah. I mean, everything I thought you said was completely right. Yeah, there is, a, there is a lot of correlation when I look at your books and I look at other books. Every little carving, you know, you show in your books in South America or Mexico. I've seen similar carvings in Indian temples, you know, and and I, some some of them I've been showing you. You know, I've seen this structure. And many, as as you saw, many of these scenes at San Augustine that have Nagas or Garuda, yeah, yeah. when you go to Vietnam and the composites, oh, no. there, yeah, you're getting that iconography and it's yeah. also in South India. And so you're able to see a continuity from going from South India all the way. Little changes slowly, you know, the, the style, yeah, style changes are there, okay. but it's all this megalithic culture. They've, they're excellent builders, they're able to move giant mm -hmm. blocks, they're making faces and statues that are uh, Shivite, mm -hmm. but also of many different races, okay. again, uh, Orientals, and, and you see this at Tiwanaku too, okay. people with beards, Chinese looking people, okay. uh, uh, blacks type okay. people. So, yeah, you're seeing all this, and it, it sh it's really showing that the these Hindu, Shivite, Cam people, they're, they're crossing the Pacific, coming to the Americas, coming to Colombia, coming to Peru, and still, everywhere they're going, they're looking for gold. They're looking metals. for gold. Yeah, okay. so back to the land of gold. And this is the thing, at San Augustine, and here in Colombia, this is what you're going to find. El Dorado. El Dorado, yeah, this... Colombia especially, and, but Peru as well, there are, there's so much gold and so much mining. And in the San Augustine area, they're going to find gold. Mm -hmm. When archaeologists did uh, excavate some of their tombs and uh, mounds and things there, they found lots of gold. Okay. And many of the archaeological sites were early on robbed by grave robbers, and what they were looking for was gold, gold as well, yeah. Okay. And they would find it. Okay. Much of this gold today uh -huh. is in the gold museum in Bogota. Okay. And that's also where we find so many uh, beautiful yeah, gold artifacts, but also the gold vimanas, these gold airplanes. So we have the in the Bogota Gold Museum, we have the gold airplanes, lots of other gold items. Uh, the gold museum in Bogota is said to be the largest collection of gold in the world that's on display. Okay. And it's all coming from the mountains around San Augustine, and okay. there's another site called Tierra Dentro, uh -huh. and other areas of the mountains of too, of Colombia as well. Mm -hmm. So Colombia uh, has a wealth of gold. It too is like Suvarma Bumi, the Suvarma land of Bumi. gold. So, right, right, right. So, so the land of gold, yeah. Yeah, so the land of gold are for the original Hindus coming from Tamil Nadu and perhaps Orissa and other places, yeah, they saw Southeast Asia as the land of gold. Uh -huh. But then, the, for the Cam and the Kampa, they had another land of gold, and it was Colombia oh. and, and, and Peru as well, I okay. think. So it's a fantastic idea, but it, it, the evidence is all there. Okay. And even, I think they originally must have come uh, by Vimana, okay. made an aerial survey okay. around San Augustine. Okay. They saw it as a place where three rivers were coming Me. together. Okay. They could see this from an aerial survey. Okay. Uh, 
uh, it was there are two volcanoes there too, so mm -hmm. it's a volcanic area. Okay. Uh, volcanoes and igneous rock uh, mm -hmm. is a sign of gold. Okay. That's where, oh, you, that's where you're going to find gold. Oh, really? Is in igneous rock, yeah. Gold largely is coming out of the ground through volcanic oh, really? action. Yeah, yeah it's gold and all these elements are within the Earth's crust and the magma. And so when it comes out so through volcanic activity and, and other things like that, mm -hmm. that's really where we get gold deposits today. Okay. So thank you so much for coming here. You know, it's been amazing having you. And I've always been dying to talk to you. Thank you. Well, thanks. It's been great talking to you.